Howdy, my name is Ted Campbell. I live in the Dallas neighborhood of Forest Meadow. I'm an associate professor of church history at Southern Methodist University here in Dallas. Lately, I've been learning about the history of this neighborhood and the adjacent neighborhoods of Town Creek and Moss Farm. I want to show you all a little bit of what I've learned about the history of this area. There are two reasons why I've considered the history of these three neighborhoods together. In the first place, a single pioneer family, the Hawks family, settled on the land that now includes all three of these neighborhoods. In the second place, the earliest parts of what we now consider to be Town Creek and Moss Farm were actually identified as Forest Meadow. So these three suburban neighborhoods grew together with each other and they share a common history. I've produced an hour-long video about the history of this area called Hawksland. This video will be the first of two brief videos introducing the history of the area that is now Forest Meadow, Moss Farm, and Town Creek. These neighborhoods are built on the Central Texas Blackland Prairie, a strip of rich, dark soil that lies over a bed of chalky gray limestone. It's wonderful for growing cotton. It's not so great for home foundations. I may need some help here. White Rock Creek, a tributary of the Trinity River, lies at the southern boundary of Moss Farm, and it's named for the chalky limestone that you can see along its banks. There are two small tributaries of White Rock Creek at the east and west of this area. On the eastern side of Town Creek is Jackson Branch, which flows south from a small lake at Richland College. On the western side of Forest Meadow and Moss Farm is a small stream called Richardson Branch, which closely follows the path of Greenville Avenue. The land in these neighborhoods drops about 150 feet in elevation between Forest Lane and the bed of White Rock Creek. American Indians of the Southern Plains had hunted in this general area and sometimes made temporary settlements around here. The Wichita tribe had moved south into Texas from the 1600s and extended as far south as Waco, Texas. But other groups came through this area displaced from their homelands by encroaching settlements from the east. The Nadako or Anadarko people, who were historically from what is now East Texas, had come into this region by the early 1800s. And a few natives of the east coast, like the Cherokee, also settled temporarily around here. By the 1880s, almost all of the native peoples of this region had been removed to reservations in Oklahoma. So far as we know, there were no settlements of European people in this area during the period of Spanish Texas or in the period when Texas was part of the Mexican state of Coahuila and Texas between 1821 and 1836. The settlement of the Dallas area by English-speaking people occurred after 1836 when Texas became an independent republic. In 1842, John Neely Bryan settled on the banks of the Trinity River at the site that would become Dallas. The settlement of the Dallas area proceeded rapidly after that year and was administered by the Peters Colony, a corporation based in Louisville, Kentucky that had petitioned the Republic of Texas for the right to mete out land grants in a huge area of North Texas. Because the Peters Colony was based in Kentucky, it attracted many settlers from Kentucky and Tennessee, although they tended to come to Texas by way of central Missouri. The route they followed was an old path that has been called the Shawnee Trail. The western branch of this trail in the Dallas area is Preston Road. An eastern branch of this trail was the route that is now Greenville Avenue. In the year 1847, a young couple named James and Amanda Houks, spelled H-O-U-X, arrived in Dallas County from central Missouri. James and Amanda Houks had been born in Kentucky, but they had grown up in Missouri with their families. Amanda must have been pregnant during their trek down the trail from Missouri because she gave birth to a son, Nicholas T. Houks, shortly after arriving in Texas on June 30, 1847. The inscription on Amanda's grave in the old Mount Calvary Cemetery on Valley View Road shows that she died on that very day, meaning, of course, that she died in childbirth or in complications from childbirth. Amanda's husband, James M. Houks, was then left to raise little Nicholas. In 1849, James Houks purchased 306 acres of land 
from a land speculator. His property was located at the confluence of White Rock Creek and Richardson Branch, and it included most of the present-day Moss Farm neighborhood. But within a year or two of purchasing this land, James M. Houts died, leaving his son Nicholas as an orphan on the Texas frontier. Nicholas Houts had the good fortune of being adopted by John and Hannah Thomas. John S. Thomas was the first county judge in Dallas County. He and Hannah, along with their children and some slaves, had moved from eastern Tennessee to central Missouri and from there to Dallas County, Texas in about 1844. In the early 1850s, John and Hannah Thomas not only adopted Nicholas Houks, but Judge Thomas also helped him secure a land grant from the state of Texas in the name of the heirs of James M. Houks. This land grant amounted to 640 acres, and it included almost all of what is today the Town Creek and Forest Meadow neighborhoods. Combined with the 306 acres he had inherited from his father, Nicholas Houks ended up with 946 acres of land. Nicholas Houks was too young to serve in the Civil War. He began cultivating his land in the late 1860s or the early 1870s. About 10 years after the Civil War, in 1874, he married a woman named Mary Elizabeth Kemper. Late in the next year, about December 1875, they had a daughter they named Edney. But Edney died nine months later in September 1876, and her grave would still have been fresh when her mother died three weeks later and was buried next to her in October 1876. Perhaps both of them succumbed to the same illness, but Nicholas Houks was once again alone. He remarried within a couple of years. He and his second wife, Maggie Bell Norman, had a daughter they named Hannah for Nicholas's adopted mother, Hannah Thomas. But Nicholas Houks himself died in 1890 at the age of 42. Maggie remarried and she and Hannah moved away from the Dallas area. So the memory of the Houks family has not been cultivated in this area. They moved to Texas where a series of tragedies befell them and Nicholas' one surviving daughter moved away. So they have been unsung pioneers, at least until now. They were the first settlers on the land that is now Moss Farm, Town Creek, and Forest Meadow. We know about some of the neighbors of the Houks family in this early period. Just east of where Town Creek is today were two families that had also come to Texas from central Missouri by way of the Shawnee Trail. The family of Joseph Prigmore, and the family of John Hayes Jackson, for whom Jackson Branch is named. The Jackson family settlement spawned two small communities, Breckenridge, located where Richland College is today, and Audelia at the present corner of Forest Lane and Audelia Road. Just north of this area, Kentucky natives John and Julia Floyd had settled in the 1850s with their family and slaves whom they had brought. I have mentioned the family of John and Hannah Thomas, who adopted Nicholas Houks. Their farm was located near the present intersection of Walnut Hill Lane and Preston Road. From 1883, Nicholas Houks and his second wife, Maggie, had begun to sell parcels of their property, including substantial amounts of property in both of the earlier tracts that was sold to an early settler, W. W. Sebastian. Sebastian, who had settled in the Duck Creek community that is now Garland, eventually purchased land in this area amounting to 640 acres. Although this property did not correspond to the earlier Houks tracts, Sebastian's property included much of the old Houks property that is now Forest Meadow, Moss Farm, and Town Creek. Sebastian died in 1898 and is buried in the Garland Pioneer Cemetery at the intersection of Saturn Road and Miller Road. Sebastian not only cultivated cotton on this land, but he and his children also utilized the land as a stock farm, raising Hereford and Holstein cattle. Nicholas Houks had lived to see the coming of railroads to this area. The railroads were the first stage in the urbanization of this area because they linked it with Dallas and with the growing network of rail lines that radiated out from Dallas. In 1873, the Houston and Texas Central Railroad was extended north from Dallas. The old H&TC Railroad Corridor is now the path of the dark red line west of Forest Meadow and Moss Farm. 
The Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad, also called the MKT or simply the Katy Railroad, was extended to the Dallas area around 1885 and would take the path that is now the dark blue line east of Town Creek. The coming of the railroad shifted the communities of the area, spawning some new ones that grew up around railroad stops and causing some older communities to disappear. Richardson was founded as a stop on the H&TC in 1873 and was named for railroad contractor E.H. Richardson. The location of the stop at Richardson caused a swift exodus of businesses from the older Breckenridge community. Some early 20th century maps of this area show a stop on the H&TC rail line labeled Bouchard just off Stultz Road. The name is carried on older topographical maps, but the tiny Bouchard community never had its own post office, so Bouchard was probably what they called a whistle stop. By the year 1900, the earliest settlers on this land had died, and the Houts family had moved away. In 1900, this area was part of the countryside of Dallas County, but rail lines had connected it to Dallas and to the world beyond. This narrative will continue in a second brief video on the history of the area that is now the Dallas neighborhoods of Forest Meadow, Moss Farm, and Town Creek. Thanks for watching.